In this video, I'll introduce you to the framework that I use to create these kind of returns. There is a very specific strategy that you can achieve, but you need to know how to read the markets. I'll provide you with the introduction to the first piece of the puzzle, which is always structure. Let's run the numbers. Today's video is a really special one. You can make money going long at spot in any market condition by starting small and then scaling. Until you become a master of spot trading, please don't use leverage. When you understand how to scale up, it's an absolute game changer, but you must know what you're doing. In this video, I'm going to show you how to trade effectively, and we'll start with some results. For some context, the trades that I made were two days ago. The market looked like this, not very pleasant at all. The second set of trades that I'll show you were made yesterday. You can see the market wasn't looking much better. And the key is I went long at spot and didn't use any leverage at all. It's probably helpful to understand who I am. I've been in financial markets for more than 35 years. I come from a statistics and actuarial science background and have a degree in finance. My central focus is for you to learn how to make more of a financial blessing to yourself and the ones you love through trading and investing in financial markets. Just very quickly, two days ago, I made the following trades. One was on Bitcoin and we can see the profit in around two hours for 5147 US dollars. Then I turned to Solana, just buying and selling within half an hour, 370 US, and then across to Doge in half an hour, about 616. So all up in around two hours, it was 6134, which is approximately around nine and a half thousand Aussie dollars in about two hours. The thing to remember is all those trades were done two days ago and the markets were ugly. And also I was going long at spot, which meant I wasn't using any leverage, just the money I had. Yesterday, the markets didn't look any better and I'll show you the output of those trades. In around an hour, I did a fair degree of buying and selling on Doge. The net profit, and this is the profit after all expenses, was about in the span of an hour, around 3,800 Australian dollars. Then I turned to Solana and did some buying and selling there. In a span of about an hour, it was around $3,200 US, which translated to just under 5,000 Australian dollars within an hour. Then I was looking at ADA. ADA was going in and out here and approximately a 3800 Aussie dollar profit from that. Effectively buying the dip on Doge, ADA and Solana. I turned over in approximately one hour. Those trades were all done simultaneously and netted around 12611 Aussie dollars. And this is all going long at spot no leverage. Your next natural question would be, how did I do it? I did it through a very scientific method. First of all, you must believe in abundance and you must believe that attaining does not deprive. Why is that important? Because you will actually just ruin your own chances of success if you believe in scarcity and if you believe you can't do it. You will prove yourself correct. The next one to understand, you must respect the financial market that you're trading or investing in. And there is no competition from other people. I know a lot of people who don't know how to trade effectively say the markets are highly competitive. In fact, they are not. The markets are very simple. If you obey the market rules, you profit. And if you violate the market rules, you will make losses. It's that simple and that complex. 
First of all, you absolutely must understand CTKS structure. Without an understanding of CTKS structure, there is no way on earth I could have made that money. Then you need to do your cheat sheet, which allows you to look at the intercorrelations and interconnections between the tier one, tier two and tier three charts. You must also understand the market's rules and your own personal rules as well. Then you just use this confluence to track changing probabilities. The probabilities will always change. Your goal is actually not to make money. As weird as that sounds, your goal is to trade well and effectively. To trade well and effectively, you must leave your emotions at the door. Just don't let them in to your trading area. It's just going to destroy your profitability. And when you trade well, don't ever do a trade for another person. Don't ever do a trade to show off to someone. You are guaranteed to violate market rules by doing so. Truly effective trading is always about learning. One thing that you must learn, and this is absolutely critical, ignore tops and bottoms and being right. A lot of people want to sell the top and they want to buy the bottom and they can't stand the concept that they could be wrong about price action. All of those three things will decimate your trading account. Just don't subscribe to any of it. And talking about subscribing, if you're new to the channel, a very warm welcome and please smash that subscribe button and flick the like if this is helpful. Also, take reasonable percentages. When you get into a position, don't get greedy. The market will tell you what it's capable of doing. Also, if you get any losses, and that is very likely, losses are just lessons that you need to learn. When you learn the lesson, the market rule will become apparent because of that loss. Just convert your losses into lessons. Always start small and scale from spot. Spot means that it's your money. You're not borrowing from anyone else and you're not leveraging. I think one of the most important things that you can ever realize, losses are not personal. A lot of people think that when they take a loss, the market or life is somehow punishing them personally. Nothing could be further from the truth. The market doesn't know you. It never will. It only knows that if you have knowledge or a lack of knowledge. Remember, your profit comes from obeying the market's rules. Therefore, you need to know what they are. The goal through trading is to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. Always understand that financial literacy is really, really important and it's becoming increasingly so. Many influencers have no idea at all how to trade. They know how to invest, that is to hold on for dear life, but they do not know how to trade. Also, many of the people out there who want to share their experience do not have experience to share, not really. And they also don't have a background in finance. Financial markets are by nature very, very statistical. There's a lot of numbers involved and I am a core developer of technical analysis. This means when I lean into a trade, I know what I'm doing and I'm showing you actual screenshots of the exchange. And this is important because very, very few influencers would ever do this. You'll see time and time again, influencers just creating, oh, I would do this. And they point to the lowest part on a chart. The difference between them and me, I actually show you what I'm doing and I provide proof. With rapid economic and social change, it's vital to be able to trade. Trading means that you're in and out of the markets. It's actually a really low risk way of making money. But not if you don't know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, you're just gambling. If you're gambling, the house unfortunately will win. Therefore, it's all knowledge as with everything. Thank you to everybody who comments on the daily video. I really appreciate you. And Sanjeev said in yesterday's video, great trades. That's a lot more than you could make selling your time for pay at a job. Absolutely, my friend. Also, something that Sanjeev said is really fantastic. Always have an investment account and a trading account. Your trading account is where you get in synchronization with the market. Your investment account should be taking, just looking at the sales that occur in negative price action to stock up. 
Even though the price action can look really negative, it doesn't mean anything if you know how to get in and out of positions. And you can also see here that yesterday's market wasn't very much better than the previous one. Broad-based losses were occurring. Basically, how investors operate, if the price is going down, they're losing money, or hopefully they're dollar cost averaging. But for a trader, negative price momentum means utterly nothing. It's actually an advantage. For this particular analysis, I'm going to focus you in on CTKS structure. You'll need to take your time to learn all of this because it does take a lot of learning. CTKS structure is the underpinning price structure across the Tier 1, Tier 2 and Tier 3 charts. The Tier 1 charts are the engines of financial markets globally. The Tier 2 and the Tier 3 tend to confirm if the engine is spluttering or if it's gaining strength. The best way to understand CTKS structure is to know it's the only leading indicator of price in existence. There are things called support levels and things called resistance levels. Resistance and support have two basic foundations. One is a retail level. A retail level is drawn from RIP, recent indicative price. Structural support is drawn through the CTKS method and shows all of price history. It's a very different resistance and a very different support level. It's the true level. The one thing that really mystifies people is that price is always moving in a wave. Even in an uptrend, it's coming down. But where is it coming down to? It's coming down to structural support levels. And where is it going up to? It's going up to structural resistance levels. Resistance acts as a ceiling and support acts as a floor. And structural resistance through the CTKS method and structural support are the strongest that you will ever see. When it comes to CTKS structure, you'll find that structure has different levels of strength, and it really depends on the clustering, either high, low, or none, and the thickness of the structural resistance and support levels. They're either thick or they're thin. And you can just figure out, just naturally, if there's high clustering of thick lines or an aggregation of thin lines, that adds up to stronger structural strength. If you have no clustering, and that means there are no lines there, that's called either a positive or negative fresh air gap. That means the price will move very, very quickly and catch a lot of people off guard. Also, beware that thin lines in terms of structure means they're very weak, unless they all band together, in which case they can be quite strong. All of the trades that I do are based on an understanding of structural resistance and structural support. For example, as Bitcoin was coming up to these levels above 66,750, I was exiting my trades because these structural levels, especially with the current circumstances, would be very strong. And you can see they're also quite clustered. When you see a structural level just breaching, it's headed towards the next one. If it can't get through, it's headed towards the one that's below it. If you have a negative fresh air gap like this, in all probability, a thin structural support level will not hold. It will need to move down to stronger structural support levels below. That's why the location of these structural support and resistance levels is incredibly important. If it's not going above, it's going below. And you want a confluence of structural levels, either lighter ones or heavier ones, but you do need confluence. It will be an absolute game changer. And a lot of people think that there was a structural resistance level there. There was not. Or a structural support level there. Again, that's recent indicative price. And RIP will RIP your money. You need to know where the entirety of structural support and resistance resides. In this particular case, we're looking at Bitcoin, which has in excess of 5,200 days worth of data. This is a non-statistically significant resistance line. Anything through there just doesn't make any sense, as through this particular area as well. This will come as a bit of a shock to a lot of people, as will multiple resistance lines and multiple support lines. But from a statistical 
an actuarial science background, it's the thing that makes the most sense in financial markets. It's the most statistically significant analysis there is. Without the CTKS method, there is no way on earth I could make these sort of profits. No way at all. You can see that you can make a huge amount of money trading. A lot of people could not make this in an hour in their job or even in a week or perhaps even a month. But you can do it if you build up to it. If I can do it, you can do it. And I'm prepared to teach you all my secrets. Structural support and resistance levels are very, very powerful if you have a lot of light levels and you have a significant sell-off. You will need to come down to a clustering of structural support levels for the price to be held. Here we're looking at the Aussie dollar, which is about, well, in excess of 19,000 days worth of data. And yes, it's important to look at the Aussie dollar if you're in crypto or if you're anywhere else, because it gives you an insight on where the DXY is headed, either up or down. Right now, I'm talking about intercorrelation and interconnection, which the free CTKS cheat sheet on ctksmethod.org will help you to understand. I do the cheat sheet every single day and combined with CTKS structure, it is an absolute prerequisite to trading success. When we look at the DXY, we can see that a different structure is available inside the DXY as compared to the Aussie dollar. A lot of people think that they need to trade Forex to look at Forex. No, you don't. You don't need to trade it, but you really do need to be aware. It takes a lot of time to understand that all charts and therefore all markets are intercorrelated and interconnected. Because they are, we need to understand where normalized end of month price could go. We do that through what are called CTKS parts and you'll learn how to do that in level two standard certification. The price waves are three types. There's a bullish or up price wave, a consolidation, and this is for the month, a flat price wave and a bearish or down price wave. I'm going to take you through those quickly because you need to know them. Boosting your financial literacy is vitally important. You can see right here on the VIX. The normalized CTKS price path is going up. Now, what does this mean? It means that the markets are under pressure, all of them. How can I prove that out? Let's have a look at the S&P 500. Now, what you can see here is this normalized negative price path is where the S&P 500 is going currently. You may think that I've drawn this particular price path just <laughs> with reflection to the current price. No, I don't do that. I draw them at the start of the month and project them out to the end of the month and I don't change them. You can see these price paths, they're available inside the video for the service, for the monthly service. These price paths are always drawn with a knowledge of CTKS structure. That's how the lines are formed. Our focus is not on predicting end of price for a specific day, but the end of the month. That's what's important. When you look at a chart that's been drawn with the CTKS method, what you'll find is that there are clusterings. This clustering around the 51.10 mark was really important. Because we lost it, we sold down quickly and there wasn't much in the way of structural support. We could be heading down to the 50.41 area at the current time. So please be aware that if you're trading inside the market, keep your eyes on the structural levels. The markets can move positively, neutrally or negatively. And when we think about what's driving the markets down right now, it's the Middle East conflict. That's the major precipitating factor. But of course, there are always more. It's not just one factor that does something. Before I place any trade, I look at the markets and see what is actually occurring across the world. I need to know this because I need to know the bias of the market. You can see currently the bias has been really, really negative, but that doesn't stop you from making money if you know what to do. You can see my trading history before. I made quite a decent amount of money just for very little time input. You can make a living by being inside financial markets and it doesn't matter if the markets are coming down. If you can read the charts effectively, you will make money. 
you'll find with a knowledge of CTK as structure, you're not going to be mystified as to why certain things are happening. You'll understand it. Oil prices lower after the Iran attack on Israel. This is just current news. When we look at the CTKS path on oil, we can see that it was just consolidating and it's become weaker. Let's zoom in a little bit to the actual structure. You might be saying, Ken, what the heck does this have to do with trading crypto? The answer is everything. If oil spikes, it's inflationary and we would expect the DXY and yields to go up. If the yields go up, we would anticipate that everything starts to crumble and the banking sector starts to collapse. You have to be aware of how one thing impacts another thing. What we saw here was that oil was coming into really steep structural resistance levels and those structural resistance levels oil could not overcome. It actually just broke down and came down to a lower structural level at 84.44. It's since come back up to 86.20 but there's so much structural overhead you can see the clustering and strength here that oil has resumed back down. If oil prices increase, the probability of the Fed actually lowering or easing interest rates is negligible because it's inflationary. And we've seen that yesterday, the probability of a rate ease was 5.9%. Today, it's 2.6%. It could be even lower currently. As you're watching this video, what does that mean? It means the DXY and the yields have come up, which is placing negative price momentum on risk on assets. That means the markets globally are coming down. A lot of people would just ignore all of these factors and wonder why the trade just moves against them. It's because they're not paying attention to intercorrelation and interconnection via the cheat sheet. I created the masterclass to help people to understand how the ver different variety of financial measures all intercorrelate with each other. If the information sector starts to decrease, it's because it's very interest rate sensitive. Defensive sectors such as the energy sector have been doing very well. This actually tells us something about the internal makeup of the economic system. It's very sensitive to interest rates at this specific time. When times get tough economically, companies lay off their employees. And we've just seen today the Tesla plans to lay off more than 10% of the workforce. A lot of people wrongly conclude that the news causes price to move. News doesn't cause price to move. News is generally manufactured by the top end of town and released after they've done whatever they want to do. We can see structurally around this 174 mark, Tesla was under a lot of negative price momentum and it simply failed to hold a key level at 168. It's moving down currently to the lower structural level of around 158. So please bear this in mind always keep your eye on structure. The top end of town is very good at placing narratives and when we look at NVIDIA we can see that NVIDIA is starting to get underneath structural one support levels now turning into resistance levels and look at that absolute absence of structural support. Don't be at all surprised if NVIDIA heads to 797. But one thing that we do as traders, we always have a three dimensional strategy playing out at all times. We know the price can go up, it can just consolidate it or it can go down and we have prepared for all three eventualities when we place a specific trade. If you're not doing that, then you better start. If you're seeking to make larger returns and make them reasonably quickly, you'll need to look far and wide and you need to be prepared to change your mind if things are not going the way you want. Consistent profitability will always elude you if you don't understand what the different charts are telling you. Here is Bitcoin just in the blue. I just trade exclusively on crypto because I love crypto. It's so incredibly volatile. I used to love trading in gold, but gold has become old and boring to me, but I still love it. I still have it. But the idea is when you're trading, you want volatility, but the volatility of the crypto market is something to behold. 
just always remember that in these days where Bitcoin was coming down and crypto was bleeding twice to three times more than the percent decline in Bitcoin, I made those profits over 20,000 Australian dollars worth. Therefore, I know what I'm doing and I'm urging you to look at the structural levels before you get into any trade or investment. If you don't do so, you could be well buying at or underneath a level of resistance and expecting that things will go up where in fact they come down because you must know where the structure is. This case, it's micro strategy that we're looking at right now. And if you're into gold, and by the way, a lot of people are, the idea is that you need to look for the strong confluences of support, just many, many levels all aggregating together. That's where you would expect gold to hit and to rebound. Where's it going to rebound to? The next structural level. If it doesn't make it above, it's coming to the one below. And if it does make it above, it's going to the one on top. But if it doesn't confirm itself, and members inside the service will know exactly what I'm talking about. I shared some really big secrets in this month's video for you to, and if you, if you haven't seen it, please watch it. It will be an absolute game changer. If you want to make returns like I'm making, you need to understand a lot of different fundamentals and that video will help you. You can see f as far as gold is concerned, if gold doesn't get above this 2386 mark, it's still under negative momentum. With the DXY going up and yields going up as well, especially the 10 year, the 10 year has just taken off. This is causing this negative price momentum. A lot of people will say, oh, it's manipulation. No, it's the structural levels inside the charts and the intercorrelations. There's a lot to understand when it comes to how to do profitable trading. But the first step is always the same. Start with the structure. If you understand where the structural support is and the structural resistance levels are and how strong they are, how aggregated they are or how weak they are, you're above 95% of people who just simply don't know. Then you need to move towards the intercorrelation and interconnection. Don't make the news your number one thing because the news today, which says the reason that things are going up will be the news tomorrow and give the same reason for things going down. It'll just drive you absolutely batty. If you like this kind of content, please smash that like button and just comment and let me know if you would like me to extend this framework out to any of these other boxes. Always understand and believe in abundance. Also, attaining never deprives another person. There's just sheer abundance in the world. A lot of people think that the markets are all about competition. These people don't understand markets at all. Just respect the market. The market will simply pay you if you understand the rules and you adhere to them. If you don't adhere to the rules, you won't be making profits, you'll be making losses. And if you do make losses, it just means that you've got to convert the loss into a lesson. Losses are never personal, but a reflection of a lack of knowledge. If you blame, you're going to create more and more losses because you simply will turn your back on learning. And this is what most people do when they get into financial markets. After all, the people who get into markets are the smartest in the world. That means that you're watching this. You are really smart and I know that. And I don't mean to offend you by saying losses are not personal, but a lack of knowledge. It's just the truth. After so many decades in financial markets, I wish somebody had told me this as I started. It would have saved me from so much pain. That's what I'm seeking to do for you. I'm trying to save you from necessary pain, get you through it as fast and as quickly as possible. Always focus on learning. Don't blame anybody else but yourself. Be accountable. I've shown these trades inside this particular video just to help explain that I know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about things that I don't put real money into. And you can do very, very well going long at spot. And you can do it consistently. Sometimes you'll find the markets are just not there for you. If they're not there for you, the best you can hope is you don't lose. 
you will get days like that. And just be aware of that. In those kind of days, what's actually occurring is that you're not obeying the rules of the market. You're probably saying, ah, I've got this. I can make the market do what I want. Always remember that the market is the one that deserves your respect. If you're doing the cheat sheet and your structure, if you're making losses, it's simply just a conversion thing. Just create a new rule for yourself and you won't suffer that loss again. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends, and I hope this video has helped you out. And always remember, you can swap your time for wages or you can swap it for wisdom. And if you do that inside financial markets, you are going to be wealthy beyond all measure. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends. And Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again in the next video. Bye for now.